To My Brothers by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Not while I live may I forget that garden which my spirit trod, where dreams were flowers wild and wet and beautiful as God. Not while I breathe, awake in a dream, shall live again for me those hours when in its mystery and gleam I met her mid the flowers. Eyes talismanic heliotrope beneath mesmeric lashes where the sorceries of love and hope had made a shining lair. And day dawn brows where overhung the twilight of dark locks and lips whose beauty spoke the rose's tongue of fragrance voweled and drips. I will not tell of cheeks and chin that held me as sweet language holds, nor of the eloquence within her bosom's moony moulds, nor of her large limbs languorous wind grace that glanced like starlight through her ardent robe's diaphanous web of the mist and dew. There is no star so pure and high as was her look, no fragrance such as her soft presence, and no sigh of music like her touch. Not while I live may I forget that garden of dim dreams, where I and song within the spirit met, sweet song, who passed me by. In the poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Fallen Beach by Madison Cowway. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Never more at doorways that are barkin' shall the madcap wind knock and the moonlight, nor the circle which thou once didst darken shine with footsteps of the neighboring moonlight, visitors for whom thou oft didst hearken. Never more gallooned with cloudy laces shall the morning, like a fair freebooter, make thy leaves his richest treasure places, nor the sunset, like a royal suitor, clothe thy limbs with his imperial graces and no more between the savage wonder of the sunset and the moon's upcoming shall the storm with boisterous hoof-beats under thy dark roof dance fawn-like to the humming of the panpipes of the rain and thunder oft the satyr spirit beauty drunken of the spring called and the music measure of thy sap made answer and thy sunken veins grew vehement with youth whose pressure swelled thy gnarly muscles winter shrunken and the germs deep down in darkness rooted bubbled green from all thy million oilets where the spirits rain and sunbeam suited of april made their whispering toilets or within thy stately shadow footed oft the hours of blond summer tinkled at the windows of thy twigs and found thee bird blithe or with shapely bodies twinkled lissome feet of naked flowers around thee where thy mats of moss lay sunbeam sprinkled and the autumn with his gypsy-coated troop of days beneath thy branches rested swarthy faced and dark of eye and throated songs of hunting or with red hand tested every nut burr that above him floated then the winter barren browed but rich in shaggy followers of frost and freezing made the floor of thy broad boughs his kitchen trapper-like to camp in grimly easing limbs snow-furred and moccasined with lichen now alas no more do these invest thee with the dignity of willem gladness they unto whose hearts thou once confessed thee of thy dreams now know thee not and sadness sits beside thee where forgot dost rest thee in the poem this recording is in the public domain The Haunted Woodland by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Haunted Woodland. Here in the golden darkness and green night of the woods, a flitting form I follow, a shadow that eludes. Or is it but the phantom of former forest moods? The phantom of some fancy I knew when I was young and in my dreaming boyhood the wild wood flowers among young face to face with fairy spoke in no unknown tongue blue were her eyes 
and golden the nimbus of her hair and crimson as a flower her mouth that kissed me there that kissed and bade me follow and smiled away my care a magic and a marvel lived in her word and look as down among the blossoms she sate me by the brook and read me wonder legends in nature's story book loved fairy tales forgotten she never reads again of beautiful enchantments that haunt the sun and rain and in the wind and water chant a mysterious strain and so i search the forest wherein my spirit feels in tree or stream or flower herself she still conceals but now she flies who followed whom earth no more reveals end a poem this recording is in the public domain discovery by madison k wine read for librivox dot org by nemo discovery what is it now that i shall seek where woods dip downward in the hills a mossy nook a ferny creek and may among the daffodils or in the valley's vistaed glow past rocks of terraced trumpet vines shall i behold her coming slow sweet may among the columbines with red bud cheeks and bluet eyes big eyes the homes of happiness to meet me with the old surprise her hoyden hair all bonnetless who waits for me where note for note the birds make glad the forest trees a dogwood blossom at her throat my may among the anemones as sweetheart breezes kiss the blooms and dewdrops drink the moonlight's gleams my soul shall kiss her lips perfumes and drink the magic of her dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain camaraderie by madison codwine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson with eyes hand arched he looks into the morning's face then turns away with schoolboy feet all wet with dew out for a holiday the hill brook sings incessant stars foam fashioned on its restless breast and where he wades its water bars its song is happiest a comrade of the chinquapin he looks into its knotted eyes and sees its heart and deep within its soul that makes him wise the wood thrush knows and follows him who whistles up the birds and bees and round him all the perfumes swim of woodland loam and trees where'er he passed the supple springs foam people sing the flowers awake and sappy lips of bark-clad things laugh ripe each fruited break his touch is a companionship his word an old authority he comes a lyric at his lip unstudied poesy end of poem this recording is in the public domain occult by madison k wine read for librivox dot org by nemo occult unto the soul's companionship of things that only seem to be earth points with magic fingertip and bids thee see how fancy keeps thee company for oft at dawn hast not beheld a spirit of prismatic hue blow wide the buds which night has swelled and stain them through with heaven's ethereal gold and blue while at her side another went with gleams of enigmatic white a spirit who distributes scent to veil and height and footsteps of the rosy light and oft at dusk hast thou not seen the star fays bring their caravans of dew and glitter all the green night's shadow tans from many star-beam sprinkling cans nor watched with these the elfins go who tune faint instruments whose sound is that moon-music insects blow 
when all the ground sleeps and the night is hushed around end of poem this recording is in the public domain wood words by madison k wine read for librivox dot org by nemo wood words one the spirits of the forest that to the winds give voice i lie the livelong april day and wonder what it is they say that makes the leaves rejoice the spirits of the forest that breathe and bud and bloom i walk within the black haw break and wonder how it is they make the bubbles of perfume the spirits of the forest that live in every spring i lean above the brook's bright blue and wonder what it is they do that makes the water sing the spirits of the forest that haunt the sun's green glow down fungus ways of fern i steal and wonder what they can conceal in dews that twinkle so the spirits of the forest they hold me heart and hand and oh the bird they send by light the jack-o'-lantern gleam by night to guide to fairy land two the time when dog-toothed violets hold up inverted horns of gold the elvish cups that spring upsets with dripping feet when april wets the sun in shadow marbled wold is come and by each leafing way the sorrel drops pale blots of pink and like an angled star of fay sets on her forehead's pallid day the blossoms of the trillium wink within the vale by rock and stream a fragile fairy porcelain blue as a baby's eyes a dream the bluets blow and gleam and gleam the sun-shot dogwoods flash with rain it is the time to cast off care to make glad intimates of these the frank-faced sunbeam laughing there the great heart wind that bids us share the optimism of the trees three the white ghost of the flowers the green ghost of the trees they haunt the blooming bowers they haunt the wildwood hours and whisper in the breeze for in the wild rose places and on the beech and knoll my soul hath seen their faces my soul hath met their races and felt their dim control four crab apple buds whose bells the mouth of april kissed that hang like rosy shells around a naiad's wrist pink as dawn tinted mist and pawpaw buds whose dark deep auburn blossoms shake on boughs as neath the bark a dryad's eyes awake brown as a midnight lake these with symbolic blooms of wind flower and wild flocks i found among the glooms of hill lost woods and rocks lairs of the mink and fox the beetle in the brush the bird about the creek the bee within the hush and i whose heart was meek stood still to hear thee speak the language that records in flowers syllables the hieroglyphic words of beauty who enspells the world and i compels and a poem this recording is in the public domain the wind at night by madison kawine read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk not till the wild man wind is shrill howling upon the hill in every wolfish tree whose boisterous boughs like desperate arms gesture and beat the night and down huge clouds in chasms of stormy white the frightened moon hurries above the house shall i lie down and deep 
letting the mad wind keep its shouting revel round me fall asleep not till its dark halloo is hushed and where wild waters rushed like some hoofed terror underneath its whip and spur of foam remains a ghostly glass hill framed where over stains of moony mists and rains and stealthy starbeams like vague spectres slip shall i with thoughts that take unto themselves the ache of silence as a sound from sleep awake end of poem this recording is in the public domain airy tongues by madison kawine read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk i hear a song the wet leaves lisp when morn comes down the woodland way and misty as a thistle wisp her gown gleams windy gray a song that seems to say awake tis day i hear a sigh when day sits down beside the sunlight lulled lagoon while on her glistening hair and gown the rose of rest is strewn a sigh that seems to croon come sleep tis noon i hear a whisper when the stars upon some evening purpled height crown the dead day with nenuphars of dreamy gold and white a voice that seems to invite come love tis night before the wraith song sparrow sings among the haw trees in the lane and to the wind the locust flings its early clusters fresh with rain beyond the morning star that swings its rose of fire above the spire between the morning's watch it wings a voice that rings o'er brooks and boughs arouse arouse before the first brown owlet cries among the grape vines on the hill and in the dam with half-shut eyes the lilies rock above the mill beyond the oblong moon that flies its pearly flower above the tower between the twilight's primrose skies a voice that sighs from east to west to rest to rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hills by madison k win read for librivox dot org by kathleen there is no joy of earth that thrills my bosom like the far-off hills the unchanging hills that shadowy beckon our mutability to follow and to gaze upon foundations of the dusk and dawn meseems the very heavens are massed upon their shoulders vague and vast with all the skyey burden of the winds and clouds and stars above lo how they sit before us seeing the laws that give all beauty being behold to them when dawn is near the nomads of the air appear unfolding crimson camps of day in brilliant bands then march away and under burning battlements of twilight plant their tinted tents the faith of olden myths that brood by haunted stream and haunted wood they see and feel the happiness of old at which we only guess the dreams the ancients loved and knew still as their rocks and trees are true not otherwise than presences the tempest and the calm to these one shouting on them all the night black-limbed and veined with lambent light the other with the ministry of all soft things that company with music and embodied form giving to solitude the charm of leaves and waters and the peace 
of bird-begotten melodies and who at night doth still confer with the mild moon who telleth her pale tale of lonely love until wan images of passion fill the heights with shapes that glimmer by clad on with sleep and memory end of poem this recording is in the public domain imperfection by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. not as the eye hath seen shall we behold romance and beauty when we've passed away that robed the dull facts of the intimate day in life's wild raiment of unusual gold not as the ear hath heard shall we be told hereafter myth and legend once that lay warm at the heart of nature clothing clay in attribute of no material mould these were imperfect of necessity that wrought through imperfection for far ends of perfectness as calm philosophy teaching a child from his high heaven descends to earth's familiar things informingly vesting his thoughts with that it comprehends end of poem this recording is in the public domain arcana by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. earth hath her images of utterance her hieroglyphic meanings which elude a symbol language of similitude into whose secrets science may not glance in which the mind in nature doth romance in miracles that baffle if pursued no guess shall search them and no thought intrude beyond the limits of her sufferance so doth the great intelligence above hide his own thoughts creations and attire forms in the dream's ideal which he dowers with immaterial loveliness and love as essences of fragrance and of fire preaching the evangels of the stars and flowers end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk first came the rain loud with sonorous lips a pursuivant who heralded a prince and dawn put on a livery of tints and dusk-bound gold about her hair and hips and all in silver mail then sunlight came a knight who bade the winter let him pass and freed imprisoned beauty naked as the court of love in all her wild flower shame and so she came in breeze-born loveliness across the hills and heaven bent down to bless before her face the birds were as a lyre and at her feet like some strong worshipper the shouting water peoned praise of her who with blue eyes set the wild world on fire end of poem this recording is in the public domain response by madison cowine read for librivox.org by bruce Kachuk. 
there is a music of immaculate love that breathes within the virginal veins of spring and trillium blossoms like the stars that cling to fairies wands and strung on sprays above white hearts and mandrake blooms that look enough like the elves washing white with laundering of may moon dews and all pale opening wild flowers of the woods are born thereof there is no sod spring's white foot brushes but must feel the music that vibrates within and thrill to the communicated touch responsive harmonies that must unshut the heart of beauty for song's concrete kin emotions that be flowers born of such End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fulfillment by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Yes, there are some who may look on these essential peoples of the earth and air that have the stars and flowers in their care and all their souls suggestive secrecies heart intimates and comrades of the trees who from them learn what no known schools declare god's knowledge and from winds that discourse there god's gospel of diviner mysteries to whom the waters shall divulge a word of fuller faith the sunset and the dawn preach sermons more inspired even than the tongues of pentecost as distant heard in forms of change through nature upward drawn god doth address the immortal soul of man end of poem this recording is in the public domain Transformation by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. It is the time when, by the forest falls, the touch me nots hang fairy folly caps, when ferns and flowers fill the lichened laps of rocks with color rich as orient shawls and in my heart i hear a voice that calls me woodward where the hamadryad wraps her limbs in bark or bubbling in the saps laughs the sweet greek of pan's old madrigals there is a gleam that lures me up the stream a naiad swimming with wet limbs of light perfume that leads me on from dream to dream an oread's footprints fragrant with her flight and lo meseems i am a fawn again part of the myths that i pursue in vain end of poem this recording is in the public domain Omens by Madison K. Wynn. Read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen. Sad o'er the hills the poppy suns had died, slow as a fungus breaking through the crusts of forest leaves, the waning half moon thrusts through gray brown clouds, one milky silver side. In her vague light, the dogwoods veil descried, seemed nervous torches flourished by the gusts the apple orchard seemed the restless dusts of wind-thinned mists upon the hills they hide it is a night of omens whom late may meets like a wraith among her train of hours an apparition with appealing eye and hesitant foot 
that walks a willowed way and speaking through the fading moon and flowers bids her prepare her gentle soul to die end of poem this recording is in the public domain abandoned by madison cowain read for librivox dot org by phone the hornets build in plaster dropping rooms and on its mossy porch the lizard lies around its chimney slow the swallow flies and on its roof the locusts snow their blooms like some sad thought that broods here old perfumes haunt its dim stairs the cautious zephyr tries each gusty door like some dead hand then sighs with ghostly lips among the attic glooms and now a heron now a kingfisher flits in the willows where the riffle seems at each faint fall to hesitate to leap fluttering the silence with a little stir here summer seems a placid face asleep and the near world a figment of her dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain the creek road by madison kawine read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk calling the heron flies athwart the blue that sleeps above it reach on rocky reach of water sings by sycamore and beech in whose warm shade bloom lilies not a few it is a page whereon the sun and dew scrawl sparkling words in dawn's delicious speech a laboratory where the wood winds teach dissect each scent and analyze each hue not otherwise than beautiful doth it record the happenings of each summer day where we may read as in a catalogue when past a thresher when a load of hay or when a rabbit or a bird that lit and now a barefoot truant and his dog end of poem this recording is in the public domain the covered bridge by madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. There, from its entrance lost in matted vines, Where in the valley foams a waterfall, It glimpsed a ruined mill's remaining wall. Here by the road the oxy-daisy mines, Hot brass and bronze, The trumpet trailer shines red As the plumage of the cardinal. Faint from the forest comes the rain-crow's call, Where dusty summer dreams among the pines this is the spot where spring writes wild flower verses in primrose pink while drowsing o'er his reins the plowman all unnoticing plods along and where the autumn opens weedy purses of sleepy silver while the corn heaped wains rumble the bridge like some deep throat of song in the poem this recording is in the public domain The Hillside Grave by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Ten hundred deep the drifted daisies break, here at the hill's foot, on its top the wheat hangs meagre bearded and in vague retreat, the wisp-like blooms of the moth mullions shake. And where the wild pink drops a crimson flake, and morning glories like young lips make sweet the shaded hush, low in the honeyed heat the wild bees hum as if afraid to wake when sleeping there with no white stone to tell the story of existence but the stem of one wild rose towering o'er briar and weed where all the day the wild birds requiem within whose shade the timid violet spell an epitaph only the stars can read end of poem this recording is in the public domain Simulacra by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by phone. 
Dark in the west the sunset's somber rack Unrolled vast walls the rams of war had split, Along whose battlements the battle lit Tempestuous beacons, and, with the gates hurled back, A mighty city, red with ruin and sack, Through burning breaches, crumbling bit by bit, Showed where the god of slaughter seemed to sit, With conflagration glaring at each crack. Who knows? Perhaps a sleep unto us makes Our dreams as real as our waking seems, With recollections time cannot destroy. So in the mind of nature now awakes Haply some wilder memory, and she dreams The stormy story of the fall of Troy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Before the End by Madison Cowing, read for LibriVox.org by phone. How does the autumn in her mind conclude the tragic mask her frosty pencil writes, broad on the pages of the days and nights, in burning lines of orchard, wold, and wood? What lonelier forms that at the year's door stood at spectral weight with wildly wasted lights shall enter? and with melancholy rites inaugurate their sadder sisterhood. Sorrow, who lifts a signal hand, and slow the green leaf fevers falling ere it dies. Regret, whose pale lips summon, and gaunt woe wakes the wild wind harps with sonorous sighs. And sleep, who sits with poppied eyes, and sees the earth and sky go dream accessories. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winter by Madison Cowing, read for LibriVox.org by phone. The flute, whence autumn's misty fingertips drew music, ripening the pinched kernels in the burly chestnut and the chinquapin, red rounding out the oval haws and hips. Now winter crushes to his stormy lips, and surly songs whistle around his chin. Now the wild days and wilder nights begin, when, at the eaves, the crooked icicle drips. Thy songs, O autumn, are not lost so soon. Still dwells a memory in thy hollow flute, which unto winter's masculine airs doth give thy own creative qualities of tune, by which we see each bow bend white with fruit, each bush would bloom in snow commemorative. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hoarfrost by Madison Cowan. Read for LibriVox.org by phone. The frail edolons of all blossom spring, year after year, about the forest tossed, the magic touch of the enchanter, frost back from the heaven of the flowers doth bring each branch and bush in silence visiting with phantom beauty of its blooms long lost each dead weed bends white haunted of its ghost each dead flower stands ghostly with blossoming this is the wonder legend nature tells to the grey moon and mist a winter's night the fairy tale which her weird fancy spells with all the glamour of her soul's delight before the summoning sorcery of her eyes, making her spirit's dream materialize. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Winter Moon by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Deep in the dell I watched her as she rode, a face of icy fire o'er the hills with snow-sad eyes to freeze the forest rills and snow-sad feet to bleach the meadow snows pale as some young witch who a listening goes to her first meeting with the fiend whose fears fix demon eyes behind each bush she nears stops yet must on fearful of following foes and so i chased her startled in the wood like a discovered oread who flies the fawn who found her sleeping each new limb glittering betrayal through the solitude, till in a frosty cloud I saw her swim, like a drowned face, a blur beneath the ice. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
In Summer by Madison Cowing, read for LibriVox.org by phone. When in dry hollows hilled with hay, the vesper sparrow sings afar, and golden grey dusk dies away beneath the amber evening star. There, where a warm and shadowy arm the woodland lays around the farm, to meet you where we kiss, dear heart, to kiss you at the tryst, dear heart, to kiss you at the tryst. When clover fields smell cool with dew, and crickets cry and roads are still, and faint and few the fireflies strew the dark where calls the whippoorwill, there in the lane where sweet again the petals of the wild rose rain, to stroll with head to head, dear heart, and say the words oft said, dear heart, and say the words oft said. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rain and Wind by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by phone. I hear the hoofs of horses galloping over the hill, galloping on and galloping on when all the night is shrill, with wind and rain that beats the pain, and my soul with awe is still. For every dripping window their headlong rush makes bound, galloping up and galloping by, then back again and around till the gusty roofs ring with their hoofs, and the draughty cellars sound. And then I hear black horsemen, hallooing in the night, hallooing and hallooing, they ride o'er vale and height, and the branches snap and the shutters clap with the fury of their flight. Then at each door a horseman, with burly bearded lip, hallooing through the keyhole, pauses with cloak a drip, and the doorknob shakes and the panel quakes neath the anger of his whip. All night I hear their gallop and their wild halloos alarm. The treetops sound and veins go round in forest and on farm, but never a hair of a thing is there, only the wind and storm. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Under Arcturus by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk I belt the morn with ribboned mist, With baldricked blue I gird the noon, And dusk with purple, crimson kissed, White buckled with the hunter's moon. These follow me, the season says, mine is the frost-pale hand that packs their scripts and speeds them on their ways with gypsy gold that weighs their backs a daybreak horn the autumn blows as with a sun-tanned band he parts wet boughs whereon the berry glows and at his feet the red fox starts the leafy leash that holds his hounds is loosed and all the noonday hush is startled and the hillside sounds behind the fox's bounding brush when red dusk makes the western sky a firelit window through the firs he stoops to see the red fox die among the chestnuts broken burrs then fanfairy and fanfairy down vistas of the afterglow his bugle rings from tree to tree while all the world grows hushed below like some black host the shadows fall and darkness camps among the trees each wildwood road a goblin hall grows populous with mysteries night comes with brows of ragged storm and limbs of writhen cloud and mist the rain wind hangs upon her arm like some wild girl that will be kissed by her gaunt hand the leaves are shed like nightmares an enchantress herds and like a witch who calls the dead the hill stream whirls with foaming words then all is sudden silence and dark fear like his who cannot see 
yet hears i in a haunted land death rattling on a gallows tree the days approach again the days whose mantles stream whose sandals drag when in the haze by puddled ways each gnarled thorn seems a crooked hag when rotting orchards reek with rain and woodlands crumble leaf and log and in the drizzling yard again the gourd is tagged with points of fog oh let me seat my soul among your melancholy moods and touch your thought sweet sorrow without tongue whose silence says too much too much End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. October by Madison Coyne. Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. Long hosts of sunlight and the bright wind blows. Attorney trumpet on the listed hill. Past is the splendor of the royal rose and duchess daffodil crowned queen of beauty in the garden's space strong daughter of a bitter race and bold a ragged beggar with a lovely face reigns the sad marigold and i have sought june's butterfly for days to find it like a coreopsis bloom amber and seal rain murdered neath the blaze of this sunflower's plume here basks the bee and there sky voyaging wings dare god's blue gulfs of heaven the last song the red bird flings me as adieu still rings upon young pear tree's prong no angry sunset brims with rosier red the bowl of heaven than the days indeed for in each blossom of the salvia bed where each leaf seems to bleed and where the wood gnats dance a tiny mist above the efforts of the weedy stream the girl october tired of the tryst deems a diviner dream one foot just dipping the caressing wave one knee at languid angle locks that drown hands nut stained hazel eyed she lies and grave watching the leaves drift down end of poem this recording is in the public domain bear bows by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Bare Boughs. O oh, heart that beat the bird's blithe blood, the blithe bird's message that pursued, now song is dead as last year's bud. What dost thou in the wood? O oh, soul that kept the brook's glad flow, the glad brook's word to sun and moon, what dost thou hear? where song lies low as all the dreams of june where once was heard a voice of song the oboes of the mad wind sing where once a music flowed along the rain's wild bugles ring the weedy water frets and ails and moans in many a sunless fall and o'er the melancholy trails the black crow's eldritch call unhappy brook o oh, withered wood o oh, days whom death makes comrades of where are the birds that thrilled the blood when life struck hands with love a song once soared against the blue a song once bubbled in the leaves a song once through where orchards grew all appled to the eaves but now the birds are flown or dead and sky and earth are bleak and gray the wild wind sob in the boughs instead the wild leaves sigh in the way end a poem this recording is in the public domain a threnody by madison kawine read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk the rainy smell of a ferny dell whose shadow no sunray flaws 
when autumn sits in the wayside weeds telling her beads of haws the phantom mist that his moonbeam kissed on hills where the trees are thinned when autumn leans at the oak root scarp playing a harp of wind the crickets chirr neath briar and burr by leaf-strewn pools and streams when autumn stands mid the dropping nuts with the book she shuts of dreams the gray alas of the days that pass and the hope that says adieu a parting sorrow a shriveled flower and one ghost's hour with you end of poem this recording is in the public domain snow by madison carwine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson the moon like a round device on a shadowy shield of war hangs white in a heaven of ice with a solitary star the wind is sunk to a sigh, and the waters are stern with frost, and gray in the eastern sky the last snow cloud is lost. White fields are winter starved, black woods that are winter fraught, cold, harsh as a face death carved, with the iron of some black thought. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vagabonds by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America Your heart's a tune with April, and mine a tune with June. So let's go roving beneath the summer moon. Oh, was it in the sunlight, or was it in the rain? We met among the blossoms within the locust lane? All that I can remember's the bird that sang a boon and with its music in our hearts we'll rove beneath the moon a love word of the wind dear of which we'll read the ruin while we still go roving beneath the summer moon a love kiss of the water we'll often stop to hear the echoed words and kisses of our own love my dear and all our path shall blossom with wild rose sweets that swoon and with their fragrance in our hearts we'll rove beneath the moon it will not be forever yet merry goes the tune while we still go a-roving beneath the summer moon a cabin in the clearing a flickering firelight when old-time lanes we strolled in the winter snows make white where we can nod together above the logs and croon the songs we sang when roving beneath the summer moon end of poem this recording is in the public domain An Old Song by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk It's O oh for the hills where the wind's someone With a vagabond foot that follows And a cheer-up hand that he claps upon your arm With the hearty words Come on, we'll soon be out of the hollows, my heart We'll soon be out of the hollows it's O oh for the songs where the hopes someone with a renegade foot that doubles and a kindly look that he turns upon your face with the friendly laugh come on we'll soon be out of the troubles my heart we'll soon be out of the troubles end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Rose of the Hills by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk The hills look down on wood and stream, On orchard land and farm, And o'er the hills the azure grey Of heaven bends the livelong day With thoughts of calm and storm 
on wood and stream the hills look down on farm and orchard land and o'er the hills she came to me through wild rose brake and blackberry the hill wind hand in hand the hills look down on home and field on wood and winding stream and o'er the hills she came along upon her lips a woodland song and in her eyes a dream on home and field the hills look down on stream and vistaed wood and breast deep with disordered hair fair in the wild rose tangle there a sudden space she stood o hills that look on rock and road on grove and harvest field to whom god giveth rest and peace and slumber that is kin to these and visions unrevealed o hills that look on road and rock on field and fruited grove what now is mine of peace and rest in you since entered at my breast god's sweet unrest of love end of poem this recording is in the public domain dirge by madison k wine read for LibriVox.org by nemo dirge what shall her silence keep under the sun here where the willows weep and waters run here where she lies asleep and all is done lights when the treetop swings scents that are sown sounds of the woodbird's wings and the bees drone these be her comfortings under the stone what shall watch o'er her here when day is fled here when the night is near and skies are red here where she lieth dear and young and dead shadows and winds that spill dew and the tune of the wild whippoorwill and the white moon these be the watchers still over her stone end a poem this recording is in the public domain Rest by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Under the brindled beech, deep in the mottled shade, where the rocks hang in reach, flower and ferny blade, let him be laid. Here will the brooks that rove under the mossy tree, grave with the music of underworld melodies, lap him in peace. Here will the winds that blow out of the haunted west gold with the dreams that glow there on the heaven's breast lull him to rest here will the stars and moon silent and far and deep old with the mystic rune of the slow years that creep charm him with sleep under the ancient beech deep in the mossy shade where the hill moods may reach where the hill dreams may aid, let him be laid. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Clairvoyance by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. The sunlight that makes of the heaven a pathway for sylphids to throng the wind that makes harps of the forests for spirits to smite into song are the image and voice of a vision that comforts my heart and makes strong i look in one's face and the shadows are lifted and lo i can see through windows of evident being that open on eternity the form of the essence of beauty 
God clothes with his own mystery. I lean to one's voice and the wrangle of living hath pause, and I hear through doors of invisible spirit that open on light that is clear the radiant raiment of music in the hush of the heavens sweep near. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Indifference by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. She is so dear, the wild flowers near each path she passes by are over fain to kiss again her feet and then to die. She is so fair, the wild birds there that sing upon the bough have learned the staff of her sweet laugh and sing no other now. Alas, that she should never see should never care to know the wild flowers love the birds above and his who loves her so end of poem this recording is in the public domain pictured by madison kawine read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk this is the face of her i've dreamed of long here in my heart's despair this is the face of her pictured in song look on the lily lids the eyes of dawn deep as a nereids swimming with dewy lids in waters wan look on the brows of snow the locks brown bright only young sleep can show such brows of placid snow such locks of night the cheeks like rosy moons the lips of fire love thinks no sweeter tunes under enchanted moons than their desire loved lips and eyes and hair lo this is she she who sits smiling there over my heart's despair never for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain serenade by madison k wine read for LibriVox.org by nemo serenade the pink rose drops its petals on the moonlit lawn the moonlit lawn the moon like some wide rose of white drops down the summer night no rose there is as sweet as this thy mouth that greets me with a kiss the lattice of thy casement twines with jasmine vines with jasmine vines the stars like jasmine blossoms lie about the glimmering sky no jasmine tress can so caress as thy white arm soft loveliness about thy door magnolia blooms make sweet the glooms make sweet the glooms a moon magnolia is the dusk closed in a dewy husk however much no bloom gives such soft fragrance as thy bosom's touch the flowers blooming now shall pass and strew the grass and strew the grass the night like some frail flower dawn shall soon make gray and wan still still above the flower of true love shall live forever love End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kinship by Madison Callwine. Read for 
LibriVox.org by Stefan von Blon. One. There is no flower of wood or lee, no April flower as fair as she. O oh, white anemone, who hast the wind's wild grace, no her a cousin of thy race, into whose face a presence like the wind's half passed. Two. There is no flower of wood or lee, no maytime flower as fair as she o oh, bluebell tender with the blue of limpid skies thy lineage hath kindred ties in her whose eyes the heaven's own qualities imbue three there is no flower of wood or lee no june day flower as fair as she Rose, odorous, with beauty of life's first and best. Behold, thy sister here confessed, whose maiden breast is fragrant with the dreams of love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. She is so much by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. She is so much. She is so much to me, to me, and oh, I love her so. I look into my soul and see how comfort keeps me company in hopes she too may know. I love her, I love her. I love her, this I know. So dear she is to me, so dear, and oh, I love her so. I listen in my heart and hear the voice of gladness singing near in thoughts she too may know. I love her, I love her, I love her, this I know. So much she is to me, so much, and oh, I love her so. In heart and soul I feel the touch Of angel callers that are such Dreams as she too may know. I love her, I love her, I love her. This I know. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her Eyes by Madison Callwine. Read for LibriVox.org. By Stefan von Blon. In her dark eyes, dreams poetize. The soul sits lost in love. There is no thing in all the skies to gladden all the world I prize, like the deep love in her dark eyes or one sweet dream thereof in her dark eyes where thoughts arise her soul's soft moods i see of hope and faith that make life wise and charity whose food is sighs not truer than her own true eyes is truth's divinity in her dark eyes the knowledge lies of an immortal sod her soul once trod in angel guise nor can forget its heavenly ties since there in heaven upon her eyes once gazed the eyes of god end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Messengers by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The wind that gives the rose a kiss with murmured music of the south hath kissed a sweeter thing than this. The wind that gives the rose a kiss 
the perfume of her mouth the brook that mirrors skies and trees and echoes in a grottoed place hath held a fairer thing than these the brook that mirrors skies and trees the image of her face o happy wind o happy brook so dear before so free of cares how dearer since her kiss and look o happy wind o happy brook have blessed you unawares in the poem this recording is in the public domain at twenty one by madison cowain read for librivox dot org by chuck williamson the rosy hills of her high breasts whereon like misty morning rests the breathing lace her auburn hair wherein a star point sparkling there one jewel burns her eyes that keep recorded dreams of song and sleep her mouth with whose comparison the richest rose were poor and wan her throat her form what masterpiece of man can picture half of these she comes a classic from the hand of god wherethrough i understand what nature means and art and love and all the lovely myths thereof end of poem this recording is in the public domain Baby Mary by Madison Kawine. Read for LibriVox.org by Chuck Williamson. To Little Emmy C. G. Deep in Baby Mary's eyes, Baby Mary's sweet blue eyes, dwell the golden memories of the music once her ears heard in far off paradise. So she has no time for tears, Baby Mary listening to the songs she hears soft in baby mary's face baby mary's lovely face if you watch you too may trace dreams her spirit self hath seen in some far-off eden place whence her soul she cannot wean baby mary dreaming in a world between end of poem this recording is in the public domain. A Motive in Gold and Gray by Madison Kawine Read for LibriVox.org by Chuck Williamson 1. Tonight he sees their star burn, dewy bright, Deep in the pansy Eve hath made for it low in the west a placid purple lit at its far edge with warm auroral light love's planet hangs above a cedared height and there in shadow like gold music writ of dusk's dark fingers scale like fireflies flit now up now down the balmy bars of night how different from that eve a year ago which was a stormy flower in the hair of dolorous day whose sombre eyes looked blurred into night's sibyl face and saw the woe of parting near and imaged a despair as now a hope caught from a homing word two she came unto him as the springtime does unto the land where all lies dead and cold until her rosary of days is told and beauty prayer-like blossoms where death was nature divined her coming yea the dusk seemed thinking of that happiness behold no cloud it has to blot its marigold moon great and golden over the slopes of musk whereon earth's voice made music leaf and stream lilting the same low lullaby again to coax the wind who romped among the hills all day a tired child to sleep and dream when through the moonlight of the locust lane 
she came as spring comes through her daffodils three white as a lily molded of earth's milk that eve the moon swam in a hyacinth sky soft in the gleaming glens the wind went by faint as a phantom clothed in unseen silk bright as a naiad's leap from shine to shade the runnel twinkled through the shaken briar above the hills one long cloud pulsed with fire flashed like a great enchantment welded blade and when the western sky seemed some weird land and night a witching spell at whose command one sloping star fell green from heaven and deep the warm rose opened for the moth to sleep then she consenting laid her hands in his and lifted up her lips for their first kiss four there where they part the porch step is strewn with wind-tossed petals of the purple vine athwart the porch the shadow of a pine cleaves the white moonlight and like some calm rune heaven says to earth shines the majestic moon and now a meteor draws a lilac line across the welkin as if god would sign the perfect poem of this night of june the woodwind stirs the flowering chestnut tree whose curving blossoms strew the glimmering grass like crescents that wind wrinkled waters glass and like a moonstone in a frill of flame the dewdrops tremble on the peony as in a lover's heart his sweetheart's name five in after years shall she stand here again in heart regretful and with lonely sighs think on that night of love and realize whose was the fault whence grew the parting pain and in her soul persuading still in vain shall doubt take shape and all its old surmise bid darker phantoms of remorse arise trailing the raiments of a dead disdain masks unto whom shall her avowal yearn with looks clairvoyant seeing how each is a different form with eyes and lips that burn into her heart with love's last look and kiss and ere they pass shall she behold them turn to her a face which evermore is his six in after years shall he remember how dawn had no breeze soft as her murmured name and day no sunlight that availed the same as her bright smile to cheer the world below nor had the conscious twilight's golden grays her soul's allurement that was free of blame nor dusk's gold canvas where one star's white flame shone more bewitchment than her own sweet ways then as the night with moonlight and perfume and dew and darkness qualifies the whole dim world with glamour shall the past with dreams that were the love theme of their lives illume the present with remembered hours whose gleams unknown to him shall face them soul to soul seven no not for her and him that part the might have been sad consolation where had bent haply in prayer and patience penitent both though apart before no blown out light the otherwise of fate for them when white the lilacs bloom again and innocent spring comes with beauty for her testament singing the praises of the day and night when orchards blossom and the distant hill is vague with haw trees as a ridge with mist the moon shall see him where a watch he keeps by her young form that lieth white and still with lidded eyes and passive wrist on wrist while by her side he bows himself and weeps eight 
and oh what pain to see the blooms appear of haw and dogwood in the spring again the primrose leaning with the dragging rain and hill-locked orchards swarming far and near to see the old fields that her steps made dear grow green with deepening plenty of the grain yet feel how this excess of life is vain how vain to him since she no more is here what though the woodland burgeon water flow like a rejoicing harp beneath the boughs the catbird and the hermit thrush arouse day with the impulsive music of their love beneath the graveyard sod she will not know nor what his heart is all too conscious of nine how blessed is he who gazing in the tomb can yet behold beneath the investing mask of mockery whose horror seems to ask sphinx riddles of the soul within the gloom upon dead lips no dust of love's dead bloom and in dead hands no shards of faith's rent flask but hope who still stands at her starry task weaving the web of comfort on her loom thrice blessed who though he hear the tomb proclaim who all is death and life death's other name can yet reply o grave these things are yours but that is left which life indeed assures love through whose touch i shall arise the same love of whose self was wrought the universe End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Reed Shaken with the Wind by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. One. Not for you and me, the path winding through the shadowless fields of morning's dewiness, where the brook that hurries hath laughter lighter than a boy's where recurrent odors poise romp like with irreverent tresses in the sun and birds in boughs build a music-haunted house for the winds that hang their dresses whisper silken rustling in ours a path that led unto twilight regions gray with dew where moon vapors gathered thin over acres sisterless of all healthy beauty where fungus growths made sad the air with a phantom-like caress under darkness and strange stars to the sorrow silenced bars of a dubious forest land where the wood scents seemed to stand and the sounds on either hand clad like sleep's own servitors in the shadowy livery of the ancient house of dreams that before us fitfully with white intermittent gleams of its pale lamped windows shone echoing with the dim unknown Two. To say to hope, take all from me, and grant me not, The rose, the song, the melody, the word, the thought, Then all my life bid me be slave, is all I crave. To say to time, be true to me, nor grant me less The dream, the sigh, the memory, the heart's distress, Then unto death set me a task, is all I ask. 3 i came to you when eve was young and where the park went downward to the river and among the dew one vesper moment lit and sung a bird your eyes said something dear how sweet it was to walk with you how with our souls we seemed to hear the darkness coming with its stars how calm the moon sloped up her sphere of fire-filled pearl through passive bars of clouds that verged the tender east while all the dark inanimate of nature woke initiate with the moon's arrival something ceased in nature's soul she stood again another self that seemed to have been dormant suppressed and so unseen all day a life unknown and strange and dream suggestive that had lain massed on with light within the new range of thought but unrevealed till now it was the hour of love and you with downward eyes and pensive brow 
among the moonlight and the dew although no word of love was spoken heard the sweet night's confession broken of something here that spoke in me a love depth made inaudible save to your soul that answered well with eyes replying silently four fair you are as a rose is fair there where the shadows dew it and the deeps of your brown brown hair sweet as the cloud that lingers there with the sunset's auburn through it eyes of azure and throat of snow tell me what my heart would know every dream i dream of you has a love thought in it and a hope a kiss or two something dear and something true telling me each minute with three words it whispers clear what my heart from you would hear five summer came the days grew kind with increasing favors deep were the nights with rest and sleep fair with poppies intertwined on their blond locks dreamy hours sunny-hearted as the rose went among the banded flowers teaching them how no one knows fresher color and perfume in the window of your room bloomed a rich azalea pink as an egret's rosy plumes shone its tender tufted blooms from your care and love i think love's rose color it did drink growing rosier day by day of your tending heart's caress and your own dear naturalness had imbued it in some way once you gave a blossom of it smiling to me when i left need i tell you how i love it faded though it is now reft of its fragrance and its color yet tis dearer now than then as past happiness is when we regret and dimmer duller though its beauty be when i look upon it i recall every part of that old wall and the dingy window high where you sat and read and all the fond love that made your face a soft sunbeam in that place and the plant that grew this bloom withered there itself long dead makes a halo overhead there again and through my room like faint whispers of perfume steal the words of love then said six all of my love i send to you i send to you on thoughts like paths that wend it to you here in my heart's glad garden wherein its lovely warden your face a lily seeming is dreaming all of my life i bring to you i bring to you in deeds like birds that sing to you here in my soul's sweet valley where through most musically your love a fountain glistens and glistens my love my life how blessed in you how blessed in you whose thoughts whose deeds find rest in you here on myself's dark ocean where o'er in heavenly motion your soul a star abideth and guideth seven where the old kentucky wound through the land its stream between hills of primitive forest green like a godly belt around giant breasts of grandeur with many an unknown indian myth on the boat we steamed the land like an hospitable hand welcomed us alone we sat on the thunder deck and saw a farmhouse and a plantation draw near and vanish neath your hat your young eyes laughed and your hair blown about them by the air of our passage clung and curled music and the summer moon and the hills great shadows hewn out of silence and the tune of the whistle when we whirled round a moonlit bend in sight of some lone landing heaped with hay or tobacco where the light of one dim solitary lamp signalled through the evening's damp then a bell and dusky gray shuffling figures on the shore with the cable rugged forms on the gangplank backs and arms with their cargo bending o'er and the burly mate before then an iron bell and puff of escaping steam and out where the steam is wheel-whipped rough music and a parting shout from the shore the pilot's bell beating on the deck below then the steady quivering slow smooth advance again until twinkling lights beyond us tell there's a lock or little town clasped between a hill and a hill where the blue grass fields slope down so we went that summer time lingers with me like a rhyme learned for dreamy beauty of its old-fashioned faith and love in some musing moment 
sith heart associated with joy that moments quiet bore thought repeated evermore eight three sweet things love lives upon music at whose fountain's brink still he stoops his face to drink seeing as the wave is drawn his own image rise and sink three sweet things love lives upon three sweet things love lives upon odor whose red roses wreathe his bright brow that shines beneath hearing as each bud is blown his own spirit breathe and breathe three sweet things love lives upon three sweet things love lives upon color to whose rainbow he lifts his dark eyes burningly feeling as the wild hues dawn his own immortality three sweet things love lives upon nine memories of other days with the whilom happiness rise before my musing gaze in the twilight and your dress seems beside me like a haze shimmering white as when we went neath the star-strewn firmament love-led with impatient feet down the night that summer sweet sparkled o'er the lamp-lit street every look love gave us then comes before my eyes again making music for my heart on that path that grew for us roses red and amorous on that path from which off start out of recollected places with remembered forms and faces dreams love's ardent hands have woven in my life's dark tapestry beckoning soft and shadowy to the soul and o'er the cloven gulf of time i seem to hear words once whispered in the ear calling as might friends long dead with familiar voices deep speak to those who lie asleep comforting so i was led backward to forgotten things contiguities that spread sudden unremembered wings and across my mind still blue from the nest they fledged in flew dazzling shapes affection knew ten ah over full my heart is of sadness and pain as a rose flower in the garden the dull dusk fills with rain as a blown red rose that shivers and bends to the wind and rain so give me thy hands and speak me at once in the days of yore when love spoke sweetly to us the love that speaks no more the sound of thy voice may help him to speak in our hearts once more ah over grieved my soul is and tired and sick for sleep as a poppy bloom that withers forgotten where reapers reap as a harvested poppy flower that dies where reapers reap so bend to my face and kiss me as once in the days of yore when the touch of thy lips was magic that restored to life once more the thought of thy kiss which awakens to life that love once more eleven sitting often i have oh often have desired you so yearned to kiss you as i did when your love to me you gave in the moonlight by the wave and a long impetuous kiss pressed upon your mouth that chid and upon each dewy lid that all passion shaken i with love language will address each dear thing i know you by picture needlework or frame each suggestive in the same perfume of past happiness till me seems the ways we knew now again i tread with you from the old-time tryst and there feel the pressure of your hair cool and easy on my cheek and your breath's aroma bare hand upon my arm as weak as a lily on a stream and your eyes that gaze at me with the sometime witchery to my inmost spirit speak and remembered ecstasy sweeps my soul again i seem dreamy yet i do not dream twelve when day dies lone forsaken and joyous kissed asleep when doubt's gray eyes awaken and love with music taken from hearts with sighings shaken sits in the dusk to weep with ghostly finger lifted what memory then shall rise of dark regret the bringer to tell the sorrowing singer of days whose echoes linger till dawn unstars the skies when night is gone and beaming faith journeys forth to toil when hope's blue eyes wake gleaming and life is done with dreaming the dreams that seem but seeming within the world's turmoil 
can we forget the presence of death who walks unseen whose scythe casts shadowy crescents around life's glittering essence as lessens slowly lessens the pace that lies between thirteen bland was that october day calm and balmy as the spring when we went a forest away neath paternal beeches gray to a valleyed opening where the purple aster flowered and like torches shadow held red the fiery sumac towered and where gum tree sentineled vistas robed in gold and garnet ripe the thorny chestnut shelled its brown plumpness bee and hornet droned around us quick the cricket tireless in the wood rose thicket tremoloed and to the wind all its moonspun silver casting swung the milkweed pod unthinned and its clean flame on the sod by the fading golden rod burned the white life everlasting it was not so much the time nor the place nor way we went that made all our moods to rhyme nor the season's sentiment as it was the innocent carefree childhood of our hearts reading each expression of death and care as life and love that impression joy imparts unto others and retorts on itself which then made glad all the sorrow of decay as the memory of that day makes this day of spring now sad fourteen the balsam breathed petunias hang riven of the rain and where the tiger lily was now droops a tawny stain while in the twilight's purple pause earth dreams of heaven again when one shall sit and sigh and one lie all alone beneath the unseen sky whose love shall then deny whose love atone with ragged petals round its pod the rain-wrecked poppy dies and where the hectic rose did nod a crumbled crimson lies while distant as the dreams of god the stars slip in the skies when one shall lie asleep and one be dead and gone within the unknown deep shall we the tryst then keep that now are done fifteen holding both your hands in mine often have we sat together while outside the boisterous weather hung the wild wind on the pine like a black marauder and with a sudden warning hand at the casement rapped the night read no sentiment of light starbeam syllabled within her romance of death and sin shadow captured tragically looking in your eyes ah me though i heard i did not heed what the night read unto us threatening and ominous for love helped my heart to read forward through unopened pages to a coming day that held more for us than all the ages past that it epitomized in its sentence where we spelled what our present realized only all the love that was past and yet to be for us sixteen though in the garden gray with dew all life lies withering and there's no more to say or do no more to sigh or sing yet we go back the ways we knew when buds were opening perhaps we shall not search in vain within its wreck and gloom mid roses ruined of the rain there still may live one bloom one flower whose heart may still retain the long-lost soul perfume and then perhaps will come to us the dreams we dreamed before and song who spoke so beauteous will speak to us once more and love with eyes all amorous will ope again his door and though the garden's gray with dew and flowers are withering and there's no more to say or do no more to sigh or sing yet we go back the ways we knew when buds were opening seventeen looking on the desolate street where the march snow drifts and drives trodden black of hurrying feet where the athlete storm wind strives with each tree and dangling light centers sphered with glittering white hissing in the dancing snow backward in my soul i go to that tempest haunted night of two autumns past when we hastening homeward were o'ertaken of the storm and neath the tree with its wild leaves whisper shaken sheltered us in that forsaken sad and ancient cemetery where folk came no more to bury haggard gravestones mossed and crumbled tottered round us or o'er tumbled in their sunken graves and some urned and obelisked above iron fenced in tombs stood dumb records of forgotten love 
and again i see the west yawning inward to its core of electric spasmed ore swiftly without pause or rest and a great wind sweeps the dust up abandoned sidewalks and in the rotting trees the gust shouts again a voice that would make its gaunt self understood moaning over death's lean land and we sat there hand in hand on the granite where we read by the leaping skies o'erhead something of one young and dead yet the words begot no fear in our souls you leaned your cheek smiling on mine very near were our lips we did not speak eighteen and suddenly alone i stood with scared eyes gazing through the wood for some still sign of ill or good to lead me from the solitude the day was at its twilighting one cloud o'erhead spread a vast wing of rosy thunder vanishing above the far hills mystic ring some stars shone timidly o'erhead and toward the west's cadaverous red like some wild dream that haunts the dead in limbo the lean moon was led upon the sad debatable vague lands of twilight slowly fell a silence that i knew too well a sorrow that i cannot tell what way to take what path to go whether into the east's gray glow or where the west burnt red and low what road to choose i did not know so hesitating there i stood lost in my soul's uncertain wood one sign i craved of ill or good to lead me from its solitude nineteen it was autumn and a night full of whispers and of mist with a gray moon wanly whist hanging like a phantom light o'er the hills we stood among the windy fields of weed and flower where the withered seed pod hung and the chill leaf cricket sung melancholy was the hour with the mystery and loneness of the year that seemed to look on its own departed face as our love then in its oneness all its dead past did retrace and from that sad moment took presage of approaching parting sorrowful the hour and dark lo among the trees now starting now concealed a star's pale spark like a fin fire winked and lured on to shuddering shadows where all was doubtful unassured immaterial and the bare facts of unideal day changed to substance such as dreams and measured them far away farther than remotest gleams of the stars lost separated and estranged and out of reach grew our lives away from each loving lives that long had waited twenty there is no gladness in the day now you're away dull is the morn the noon is dull once beautiful and when the evening fills the skies with dusky dyes with tired eyes and tired heart i sit alone i sigh apart and wish for you ah darker now the night comes on since you are gone sad are the stars the moon is sad once wholly glad and when the stars and moon are set the earth lies wet with heart's regret and soul's hard ache i dream alone i lie awake and wish for you these who once spake me speak no more now all is o'er day hath forgot the language of its hopes of love night whose sweet lips were burdensome with dreams is dumb far different from what used to be but silence and despondency they speak to me twenty one so it ends the path that crept through a land all slumber kissed where the sickly moonlight slept like a pale antagonist now the star that led us onward reassuring with its light fails and falters dipping downward leaves us wandering in night with old doubts we once disdained so it ends the woods attained where our heart's desire builded a fair temple fire gilded with hope's marble shrine within where the lineaments of our love shone with lilies clad and crowned neath white columns reared above sorrow and her sister sin 
columns rose and ribbon wound in the forest we have found but a ruin all around like the shattered capitals and vast fragments of the walls like a climbing cloud that piles wind-wrecked or the moon that lies neath its blackness taking on gradual certainties of wan soft assaults of easy white pale approaching till the sky's emptiness and hungry night claim its bulk again while she rides in lonely purity so we found our temple broken and a musing moment space love whose latest word was spoken seemed to meet us face to face making bright that ruined place with a strange effulgence then passed and left all black again end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Flower of the Fields by Madison Kywine Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Be bitten in the orchard hung the peach, Or fallen in the weeds lay rotting, Where still sucked and sung the gray bee, Boring to its seeds pink pulp, And honey blackly stung. The orchard path, which led around the garden, With its heat one twinge of denning locust, Picket-bound and ragged, Brought me where one hinge, held up the gate that scraped the ground. All seemed the same. The martin box, sun-warped with pygmy balconies, still stood with all its twittering flocks perched on its pole above the peas and silvery-seeded onion stalks. The clove pink and the rose, the clump of coppery sunflowers, with the heat sick to the heart, the garden stump red with geranium pots and sweet with moss and ferns this side the pump. I rested with one hesitant hand upon the gate. The lonesome day, droning with insects, made the land one dry stagnation, soaked with hay and scents of weeds the hot wind fanned. I breathed the sultry scents, my eyes parched as my lips, and yet I felt my limbs were ice, as one who flies to some strange woe. How sleepy smelt the hay-sweet heat that soaked the skies. Noon nodded dreamier lonesomer for one long plaintive forest-sided bird quaver and i knew me near some heartbreak anguish she had died i felt it and no need to hear i passed the quince and pear tree where all up the porch a grapevine trails how strange that fruit whatever air of earth it grows in never fails to find its native flavor there and she was as a flower too that grows its proper bloom and scent no matter what the soil she who born better than her place still lent grace to the lowliness she knew they met me at the porch and were sad-eyed with weeping then the room shut out the country's heat and purr and left light stricken into gloom so love and i might look on her End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The White Vigil by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The White Vigil. Last night I dreamed I saw you lying dead, and by your sheeted form stood all alone frail as a flower you lay upon your bed and on your still face through the casement shone the moon as lingering to kiss you there fallen asleep white violets in your hair oh sick to weeping was my soul and sad to breaking was my heart that would not break and for my soul's great grief no tear i had no lamentation for my heart's deep ache yet all i bore seemed more than i could bear beside you dead white violets in your hair a white rose blooming at your window bar and glimmering in it like a firefly caught upon the thorns the light of one white star looked on with me as if they felt and thought as did my heart how beautiful and fair and young she lies white violets in her hair and so we watched beside you 
sad and still the star the rose and i the moon had passed like a pale traveller behind the hill with all her echoed radiance at last the darkness came to hide my tears and share my watch by you white violets in your hair end of poem this recording is in the public domain too late by madison codwine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson i looked upon a dead girl's face and heard what seemed the voice of love call unto me out of her heart whereon the character of her lost dreams i read there word for word how on her soul no soul had touched or stirred her life's sad depths to rippling melody or made the imaged longing there to be the realization of a hope deferred so in her life had love behaved to her between the lonely chapters of her years and her young eyes making no golden blur with god bright face and hair who led me to her side at last and bade me through my tears with death's dumb face too late to see and know end of poem this recording is in the public domain intimations by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson one is it uneasy moonlight on the restless field that stirs or wind white meadow blossoms the night wind bends and blurs is it the dolorous water that sobs in the wood and sighs or heart of an ancient oak tree that breaks and sighing dies the wind is vague with the shadows that wander in no man's land the water is dark with the voices that weep of the unknown strand o ghosts of the winds who call me o ghosts of the whispering waves as sad as forgotten flowers that die upon nameless graves what is this thing you tell me in tongues of a twilight race of death and with vanished features mantled of my own face Two the old enigmas of the deathless dawns and riddles of all immortal eves that still o'er delphic lawns speak as the gods spoke through oracular leaves i read with new-born eyes remembering how a slave i lay with breasts bared for sacrifice once on a temple's pave or crowned with hyacinth and hillocris how towards the altar in marble gloom hearing the magadus dirge through the pale amarcine perfume mid chanting priests i trod with never a sigh or pause to give my life to pacify a god and save my country's cause again cyrenian roses on wild hair and oil and purple smeared on breasts and cheeks how with mad torches there reddening the cedars of cytheron's speaks with gesture and fierce glance lascivious maenad bands once drew and slew me in the pyric dance with bacchanalian hands three the music that lays dim lips against my ears some wild sad thing it says unto my soul of years long passed into the haze of tears meseems before me are the dark eyes of a queen a queen of istakar i seem to see her lean more lovely than a star of me a slave i stand before her jewelled throne i kneel and in a song once more my love for her reveal how once i did adore and feel again her dark eyes gleam again her red lips smile and in her face the beam of love that knows no guile and so she seems to dream a while out of her deep hair then a rose she takes and i am made a god o'er men her rose that here did lie when i in the wild beast den did die four old paintings in its wainscots and in its oaken hall old arras and the twilight of slumber over all old grandeur in its stairways and in its haunted rooms old souvenirs of greatness and ghosts of dead perfumes the winds are phantom voices around its carven doors 
the moonbeam's spectre footsteps upon its polished floors old cedars build around it a solitude of sighs and the old hours pass through it with immemorial eyes and more than this i know not nor where the house may be nor what its ancient secret and ancient grief to me all that my soul remembers is that forgot almost once in a former lifetime twas here i loved and lost five in eons of the senses my spirit knew of yore i found the isle of circe and felt her magic lore and still the soul remembers what flesh would be once more she gave me flowers to smell uh, that wizard branches bore of weird and sorcerous beauty whose stems dripped human gore their scent when i remember i know that world once more she gave me fruits to eat that grew beside the shore of necromantic ripeness with human flesh at core their taste when i remember i know that life once more and then behold a serpent that glides my face before with eyes of tears and fire that glare me o'er and o'er i look into its eyeballs and know myself once more six i have looked in the eyes of poesy and sat in song's high place and the beautiful spirits of music have spoken me face to face yet here in my soul there is sorrow they never can name nor trace i have walked with the glamour gladness and dreamed with the shadow sleep and the presences love and knowledge have smiled in my heart's red keep yet here in my soul there is sorrow for the depth of their gaze too deep the love and the hope god grants me the beauty that lures me on and the dreams of folly and wisdom that thoughts of the spirit dawn are but masks of an ancient sorrow of a life long dead and gone was it sin or a crime forgotten of a love that loved too well that sat on a throne of fire a thousand years in hell that the soul with its nameless sorrow remembers but cannot tell end of poem this recording is in the public domain Two, by Madison Callwine, read for LibriVox.org, by Stefan von Blon. With her soft face half turned to me, like an arrested moonbeam, she stood in the cirque of that deep tree. I took her by the hands; she raised her face to mine, and half amazed remembered and we stood and gazed how good to kiss her throat and hair and say no word her throat was bare as some moon fungus white and fair had god not given us life for this the world old amorous happiness of arms that clasp and lips that kiss the eloquence of limbs and arms the rhetoric of breasts whose charms say to the sluggish blood what warms had god or fiend assigned this hour that bloomed where love had all of power the senses aphrodisiac flower the dawn was far away nude night hung savage stars of sultry white around her bosom's ethiop light night night who gave us each to each where heart with heart could hold sweet speech with life's best gift within our reach and here it was between the goals of flesh and spirit sex controls took place the marriage of our souls end of poem this recording is in the public domain